Oh, that's blinding. Okay, I guess we are at time. So, um, hello everyone. Thanks for joining here today. Um, my name is Andrea Frittoli. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Um, I'm QA tech lead for the Helion uh, distribution we make there. And I'm a uh, member of the core QA team for OpenStack. So today I will be talking about uh, stable interfaces in Tempest and how to use them for OpenStack integration testing. Um, one logistic question, I may say Neutron or Newton, or understand either of them. Uh, there was an email actually in the distribution list on um, April 1st about renaming Neutron to Neutron, to Quantum, but maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. <laughs> um, does this work? All right, um, so how many of you in the room are familiar with QA for OpenStack and Tempest? Well, quite a few, but probably half of you. Okay, well, I'll provide some more details. Basically, um, what we do in the QA team, our official mission statement is to provide tools and initiate projects and initiatives to ensure that OpenStack quality is maintained um, at any time during the release cycle. So our job is to make sure that you can go and take OpenStack at any point and uh, you can find the quality you would expect. Uh, if I learn how to use this. Right, so we have a number of uh, QA projects that we maintain to achieve that. Um, I kind of group them by topic. So the first three are related to um, kind of syntax checks that you may want to use in your project to check your syntax of your JSON code, of your bash code, or of your Python code, whatever technology you use in your project. Um, then Tempest, Tempest Lib, and Grenade are really uh, about tests and test frameworks. So they contain two, uh, the framework and the test to, to verify uh, your deployed cloud and upgrade uh, in the cloud in case of Grenade. Um, DevStack and related are projects which uh, allow you to deploy a cloud, uh, not a production cloud maybe, but a cloud which is good enough for testing. Uh, purposes. Um, then down towards the bottom, StackVits and OpenStack Health dashboard are related to actually uh, the collection and visualization of test results. Uh, plus we have other tools like uh, OS Testar, which is a wrapper around Testar uh, to make Testar nicer for our needs, basically. Um, some cookie cutter uh, that you can use to um, develop, start uh, development of plugins. And uh, the rather new OS performance tools, which is a combination of um, Python tools to collect performance uh, data so from the cloud. Uh, so what is Tempest? Um, so Tempest is the um, integration uh, framework, um, test integration framework for OpenStack. So it's uh, strictly black box testing, so API-driven testing, and includes um, the framework and the test which are executed thousands of times every day in the, in the gate. So whenever you submit a patch um, to some project um, in OpenStack, it's quite likely um, that uh, some uh, DevStack cloud will be started and then Tempest test will be executed uh, against it. Um, so when Tempest started, um, it, the scope was relatively little, so a handful, a little more of projects at the time. Um, then more and more uh, projects started to be incubated and then integrated into OpenStack. So um, we started having more and more tests to um, include in Tempest um, and uh, more knowledge also needed, required in the uh, QA team to manage those tests. Um, so we already started at that time to realize that uh, the model didn't scale very well, but then when the governance uh, model changed to the big tent, I think at Liberty times, um, then 
well, we realized it really didn't work like that. Uh, we couldn't uh, provide enough uh, QA coverage for all the projects that were coming into OpenStack at that point in time. Um, so um, we had to change model. Uh, so we decided that um, we should use a more distributed approach of QA and as a QA team only maintain uh, the test for a core, small core of services and let uh, all the other projects care for their own QA using the tool that we provide. So um, the first initiative that we started was um, uh, Tempest Lib. So it was initially Tempest underscore Lib, um, as Matt can tell you. <laughs> so um, the idea was to create a stable uh, interface within Tempest. So a part of the interface that we guarantee is backward compatible that other projects can consume and use to create their own test. And we wanted to do that within Tempest. Uh, however, the Tempest namespace was taken in Py on PyPy, so someone else was having some Tempest project. So um, we couldn't do that. So um, Tempest Sleep as a separate repo was born at the time. Uh, recently, Matt managed to get the Tempest namespace back because it's not used anymore. So the project that used that name is actually not alive anymore. So we moved back to uh, a namespace within the Tempest repo. Um, later, so um, that was uh, towards the end of uh, Liberty, the plugins interface was introduced in Tempest as well, which allows you to uh, define a, a set of tests and configuration items that can be uh, loaded then in Tempest. So what are the projects that we support? So Keystone, Nova, Glance, Synthon, Neutron, and Swift. Um, these tests are uh, part of the Tempest uh, suit and they are executed as part of the integrated gate, which means that every change which runs integrated gate runs all the tests for all these projects. So where do the other tests leave? Um, so they're a combination of uh, things. So there are uh, several Tempest plugins out there in different repositories. Uh, there are CLI tests for several Python clients for the different services. Um, and there is a combination of other uh, functional and integration tests that they use uh, part of different parts of uh, Tempest stable APIs. Uh, those tests, they are not executed um, against changes in Tempest. Uh, they are only executed against changes to the repositories that own those tests. and. Uh, because of that, they should only use the stable interface of Tempest because otherwise they have no guarantee that um, they will break at some point. So six months ago, um, we presented Tempest plugins um, and this was um, the situation in Tokyo. The interface was pretty new, so there were only four plugins out there. But now it's a bit different. So we are almost at 30 plugins available, uh, which is a good number. I don't know if you can read the names there, it's maybe a bit small, uh, but something that I wanted to um, note is that um, you see the name of the repositories there in the graph. Uh, how does this work? Anyways, um, you see the name of the repositories there in the graph um, where the Tempest plugin is actually hosted. and. And I would say probably 90% of the cases the plugin is hosted uh, within uh, the repository of the service um, they want to test. So there are some exceptions, Sahara test, um, Intel NFV, CI test, but those are probably not even plugins. Oh no, they are plugins, but um, yeah, those are the two only exceptions that I can see. Um, so while there is, uh, certain degree of convenience in running the plug in having hosting the plugin in the same repository as the service um, because it allows you to change the service API and the plugin uh, so the test at the same time with one change there are there are also disadvantages in doing that um, one is that um, in terms of dependencies it is not possible while the plugin is hosted in a uh, repo for a service to declare 
uh, the, the right requirements for the plugin. So it means that anytime you want to go and install a plugin, uh, you actually have to install all the dependency for the service uh, that the plugin is testing. So this may not be a problem if you're just a single node test tech, uh, but if you start to consider more um, different deployments where you have a, a cloud, an actual cloud and a test driver, then you end up installing a lot of dependencies on your test drivers that you don't need to um, install. And the other thing is that um, Tempest is branchless. So that means that we run the same uh, version of Tempest against um, all stable branches that are supported um, in OpenStack. Um, and if you write uh, a Tempest plugin in the repository of a service, which is branched, it means that your plugin will be branched as well, which is not consistent with, uh, with the model we have in Tempest. So you will run into problems eventually when the next release uh, comes out. Um, same graph, type of graph for CLI tests. Uh, so over time, you see that uh, different Python clients have started to introduce um, CLI tests based on the stable interface. Um, other tests that uh, I could find, um, so there are a couple of Tempest plugins which are almost ready, uh, not used yet, I, as far as I could tell from uh, Kingbird and Vitrage. Um, there are several Tempest tests in different repositories, um, which could become plugins eventually. I know, for instance, the Designate team is already working on uh, creating a plugin, a uh, proper Tempest plugin uh, in a dedicated repo. So, um, other type of tests. Um, so, there are some test suits which only use part of the uh, available uh, stable API, like the REST client and a little more. Um, which is good to see because the idea of having a stable interface uh, was exactly that to have something out there that people can pick uh, and choose and use what they want, uh, what actually best suited for the type of testing that they need to do. So I've seen um, examples where um, the REST client is used and maybe, uh, maybe other interfaces are mocked uh, to provide more efficient testing for specific projects. So what are these uh, stable interfaces, uh, in fact? So this is the full list, I hope. Um, there are uh, clients and authentication providers and many more. Um, rather than going through all of them one by one in this list, I wanted to show um, how they are used. Uh, across different repositories. So what I'm showing here um, uh, is the number of repositories that use a certain interface at least uh, once by an import, explicit import. Um, so uh, it was interesting to do this graph because basically I could verify that uh, pretty much most of the interfaces that we expose in Tempest Lib are being used by projects. Um, so uh, things like uh, the REST client. Be nice to... oh, yeah, it works somehow. I don't know how. Well, things like the REST client is used by a good number of projects. Um, decorators, exceptions uh, are used as well a lot. The second most used, actually, it's interesting, is um, utils. Um, it's a simple thing that we expose that is a method basically to generate test data, things like a random name, a random password. Seems to be pretty popular. <laughs> um, down towards the bottom of the graph, uh, I don't know if it's readable, but you could see, uh, you can see, for instance, things like uh, oath. Um, you would expect OFF to be used by most projects, but in fact, it, 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 uh, it is not explicitly imported. It is used, but indirectly. There are some other uh, interfaces within Tempest that basically allow you to hide that and uh, avoid the need to call that interface directly. 
There are other interfaces that are not yet stable, but they are a potential candidate to become so. Um, so some of these service clients, um, they are not yet in the stable area. They're, they're working on that to, to make them uh, stable. Um, the credentials providers, um, those are um, tools I will uh, describe more later, but basically about uh, the, uh, getting interface uh, credentials that you can use in your tests. Client managers um, to collect all your clients in a single object. And actually the plugin interface itself, um, which is not stable yet, uh, it's not in the stable area, but it is in fact stable. So it's pretty much just a, a matter of uh, moving it over. And uh, well, the att uh, attribute decorator is pretty much um, used everywhere. <laughs> so it may be worth moving it over. It's very small, it's probably five or six line of code, I don't know. And the same graph here for uh, internal uh, APIs. There are a lot of them that are being used. Um, so uh, the config one is, uh, goes along with the plugins one. Uh, there is a little util again, three or four lines of code in the config module that allows you to uh, register config options and that is used by pretty much all plugins. That's why that's Pike on the config. Um, and then uh, test is a, the, at, uh, the attribute decorator again, <laughs> is creating that spike over there. There are other interfaces which are used that are not stable, like the manager for the scenario tests and so forth. Um, so we may consider uh, moving them to stable in future. And if you are writing integration tests and there is an area of Tempest that you're using that you think should be in the stable area, please let us know. And uh, also you're welcome to contribute uh, to making that uh, a stable interface. Basically the requirement we have to, uh, for interface to be stable is that, um, first of all, it should not depend on uh, configuration uh, because we don't want uh, consumers of the stable interface to depend on uh, Tempest configuration. Um, and uh, secondly, once we move an interface into the uh, stable area, we uh, guarantee backward compatibility, so we should provide a decent level of uh, documentation and good interface that will not change in future. So, um, to provide some more details um, about the different interfaces, um, I wanted to go through an example of how to write a Tempest plugin and where do uh, these different interfaces come into play. So the first um, is uh, the Tempest plugin interface itself. Um, that's an interface that allows you to um, specify to Tempest where to find uh, a group of tests that are external to Tempest and to uh, provide some, a set of configuration items which are specific for those tests and no native to Tempest. We plan in future to do some extension to these uh, which will allow to integrate uh, custom service clients. So if you have your service which comes with uh, its own uh, specific service client then you can integrate it via the plugin interface. Plugins are discovered. Uh, oops. Uh, Plugins are um, discovered uh, via Steve door, which means that as long as they are uh, installed um, and visible to Tempest, uh, they will be discovered and the, temp the test and the configuration option will be loaded and become available. Um, normally, we install Tempest in a dedicated uh, virtual environment and there is one um, environment, spe specific environment in, uh, in uh, Tempest uh, Toxini, which um, installs, uh, creates a virtual environment with uh, a site enabled, which allows Tempest to discover plugins which are installed system-wide, so externally from the uh, virtual environment where Tempest is installed. Um, there is uh, uh, also something that I wanted to, to note, that uh, once the um, 
the plugin is installed, uh, it will automatically become visible to Tempest. And uh, if you don't want to run the tests, you should not install the plugin because otherwise uh, there is no way that you can basically install the plugin and configure Tempest not to run uh, that uh, plugin unless you specify then a regular expression to filter that those tests off. So this is an example uh, from uh, Manila of how it may look like. So basically in the top line you can see that uh, all you need to import is uh, plugins from tempest.testdiscover. If you want to use the uh, register opt group method, then you can import it from Tempest config as well. Um, okay, once you have um, your plugin structure in place, uh, one thing that you may uh, want to do, um, that you may need to do is to write your own um, service client. In some, not, that's not necessarily the case for all plugins, so you may want to write a plugin where you just uh, bundle together a bunch of uh, neutron tests that you don't want to run in the integrated gate and put them in a plugin. In that case, you don't need an extra service client. But um, in most of the cases, um, the plugin will be associated to a dedicated service and then you will need uh, an extra service client. So to do that, you can use the REST client interface, which provides method to uh, run all the different HTTP methods, uh, to decorate them uh, using the auth providers. Um, it provides you with validation of HTTP um, codes and also for with handling of non-200 um, return codes. In terms of service clients, um, as you've seen before, um, a number of the service clients for the core services are already part of the stable interface. The remaining ones are the remaining ones are being moved over. And they provide a method, a single method for specific APIs. So for each API available from each of the serv core services, you have a dedicated method. And uh, they allow you normally to, to pass any parameter to the API call. So in case you want to do um, fast testing or negative testing or play with the parameters that you pass into, into the API, you can do that. This is an example, um, the telemetry client uh, that is now in a plugin and uh, shows you basically importing from Tempest Leap, common the REST client, you can uh, define your own uh, REST client. Um, what they do in this uh, specific uh, client uh, plugin is also to define an extra manager. And you can see below that in the manager uh, object, the uh, telemetry client is instantiated by passing the off provider in plus a set of uh, parameters. So where do you get the off provider from? The off provider comes from the authentication layer in, uh, in Tempest. So the authentication layer provides uh, you tools to basically encapsulate your credentials for your test accounts into credential objects. Uh, it provides facilities to select the endpoints from the catalog based on different filters like regions and uh, endpoint type and so forth. It allows you to decorate requests uh, with auth information for v2 or v3 and also to do things like injecting uh, alternate auth data if you want to play uh, in your test with uh, the auth data and mix uh, proper data, proper tokens with invalid uh, data. So to verify like things like the tenant cannot ac access other tenants or project, I should say, resources. Uh, this is an example of using the of layer. So it's in Tempest Leap of. Um, an interface which is not yet part of the stable uh, interface, but we are working on uh, making it a stable interface is uh, the client managers. The client managers uh, provide you one object um, which is bound to a set of credentials. And through that object, you can get access to all the service clients uh, which are registered. Um, it's nice to have uh, in the sense that it hides the complexity of the whole layer. So if you have an, 
client manager object, you can initialize it with a set of credentials and it will uh, provide you with all the clients, initialize with the right auth provider and everything that you need so you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, so in um, what we're working on is to uh, a way to register service clients from plugins into the existing managers from Tempest so that you can get them from there. And also uh, lazy loading of clients, which means that if you get a client manager object, not all the clients will be initialized, um, which makes sense um, because um, in some cases you only want to test your own service, so maybe your service plus Keystone or plus uh, Nova, and you don't want to have all the config parameters that are required to initialize uh, all of the other clients. Again, an example, um, the managers are uh, in tempest.manager and um, in tempest.clients as well. There is a more uh, sophisticated version. And finally, credential providers. Uh, credential providers are um, also not yet in the stable uh, area of Tempest, uh, but we are working on moving them there. Um, they um, allow you to get a set of credentials for uh, your tests. Um, when you want to run uh, multiple tests in parallel, uh, then if you want to keep them isolated, you may need um, several uh, credentials, maybe one or two credentials for each uh, parallel stream that you're running. So these credential providers uh, give you a way to uh, have access to uh, the set of credentials. Um, they also manage network resources associated to those credentials. Uh, there are two of them, actually. One is the uh, dynamic credential provider, formerly known as uh, tenant isolation. Uh, but now tenant is forbidden, so. <laughs> um, as long as you have access to admin credentials and you are allowed to inject your admin credentials into your Tempest config file, then you can use uh, the dynamic credential providers, which will create credentials on the fly for your test. So each test class, when it starts, it will get uh, one or two sets of credentials. Um, the other alternative, if you don't have access to admin credentials at test runtime, or uh, simply if you just want to reuse test accounts multiple times, uh, which is a valid use case as well, um, is to use the pre-provision credentials provider. In that case, you create the, the credentials that you want to run to use for testing before running the test. Um, you store them into a YAML file and you feed the YAML file to Tempest um, and the pre-provision credential provider will allocate them, um, taking care of the locking and make sure the credentials are not used by two different tests at the same time. Um, finally, um, if you're um, working on a new service or an existing service, uh, it may well be that uh, your API supports micro versions. And so if you're uh, writing tests uh, for micro versions, uh, you can use a set of utilities from Tempest Lib to deal with that. Um, they allow you basically to define um, the acceptable range of micro versions for the test that you're running. So you can say this test is only valid between version X and Y. Um, they allow you to match that against a configurable uh, range uh, of micro versions as well. And uh, they select accordingly the micro versions to be, set, to be sent via the API when you make requests. Um, this is an example actually from Tempest um, Nova tests of using um, the micro version framework. So, um, yeah, there are several other miscellaneous utils in the lib um, area. So one for to generate random test data, which is pretty popular. We have an SSH client that you can use if you want to do validation on VMs. Uh, we have skip decorators that you can use um, to skip tests based on different conditions, uh, like service not being available. And uh, test attributes, well, that's not, you know, not yet stable, but as I was saying, it's just a few lines of code and it's uh, widely used. 
Um, the same uh, for CLI tests. So what kind of stable interfaces are available to you if you want to run, uh, write tests for your uh, Python clients? Um, so there are uh, four uh, pieces that you uh, can use. One is the execute command that uh, gives you access to running basically an external command uh, like uh, Nova or Neutron or so. You have a CLI class, CLI client class, which is a wrapper around that, which uh, exposes, um, it, it wraps around the execute uh, method basically. It gives you a nicer interface. Uh, we have an output parser, which allows you to uh, parse the output, the console output of uh, clients that like in uh, tabular format, for instance. And the client test base, which is the base test class that you need to uh, implement to run the tests, and that uh, provides you with a link to the former free already in. Uh, this is an example from Mistral uh, CLI tests. The only thing they need to import in there is actually base, because once you get the base uh, class, uh, then you get everything else from it. Right, and that's um, that's all, basically. So this is a list of uh, more uh, references, um, you, documentation uh, from the developer, documentation of Tempest, um, the plugin documentation, the link to the source code for this presentation. <coughs> and uh, yeah, you can find us on uh, OpenStack QA on Freenode. And uh, I don't have an idea what the time is. Um, there is, um, yeah, there is still some time for questions. So if you have any question, uh, you can ask them here now or just find me later as well. Put that last slide back up for a second. Thank you. Uh, there are two microphones um, in the two lanes. So if you want to ask any question, please use the microphones. Just one quick question. Um, are there minimum requirements for the, the cloud uh, that you're running Tempest against as far as memory, CPU, and, and where you're running Tempest from as well for it to operate properly? Um, right, so in terms of um, sizing of your cloud, it depends very much on um, the the concurrency, the level of concurrency that you um, are uh, using uh, in your test driver. So um, if you want to run multiple tests in parallel, um, you may need more resources in your cloud, of course. Um, but um, we found that if you go beyond, I think, the level of, uh, the four uh, parallel streams, you don't gain uh, very much in terms of uh, the time it takes to run your tests. You only gain in the um, amount of stress you may put on your cloud, just because there are some of the tests which are uh, long running. So, so then the rest of the tests take less than the single test to execute. Um, in terms of connectivity, um, it really depends on how your cloud is configured. Um, and. Um, so the minimum requirement that you need to have is that you need to have connectivity to the endpoints as they are specified in your catalog. Um, so as long as you um, have access to the um, core uh, endpoint for authorization, then you can download the catalog. And if the URLs in there are um, reachable by Tempest, then you should be able to test. Uh, there are some other uh, requirements that you may incur into if you want to do things like validating your VMs. So if you, uh, for instance, start up servers and you attach floating IPs to them, then you need to make sure that your test driver is somehow connected to the network, which is providing um, floating or public IPs to your VMs. But otherwise, that's um, all you need. So the tests are strictly black box, so you only need access to 
to the APIs and uh, optionally to the to the VMs. against Rally, which is another popular testing framework for OpenStack? Um, well, um, they're separated, uh, so to say. Um, so Rally um, is part of its own program. It's not part of the um, QA program in terms of uh, governance. Uh, there are some um, parts that overlap between um, what we provide here and what provide in, uh, in what is provided in Rally. Um, I'm not an expert in Rally, to be honest. I don't want to comment too much on that. Um, I know Rally provides tools for benchmarking uh, that are not um, covered um, in the current Tempest 3. Um, and yeah, so. So if there are no more questions, I think it was a long day for our first day in the summit. <laughs> so thanks everyone. <laughs>